In this, part two of the program, you will learn the correct procedures for safely preparing the gas equipment. These procedures will include preparing the regulators, lighting a welding torch, setting a neutral flame, shutting down, and purging. Fitting a regulator is necessary whenever a cylinder is replaced and it is the responsibility of the operator to ensure that this is done correctly. The task begins by removing the protection plug from the cylinder valve port. This plug is fitted by the gas supplier to keep dirt or debris out of the valve during storage and transit. A quick squirt of gas by opening and closing the cylinder valve very quickly will dislodge any possible remaining particles that might otherwise enter the regulator. Regulators should be stored with protective covers over their openings. Remove the protective cover only when you are ready to fit the regulator into the cylinder valve. Connect the regulator to the cylinder valve, threading it into place by hand until it is nipped. Select a set spanner of the proper size to suit the bullnose connector nut. Remember that the acetylene regulator connection has a left-hand thread. Tighten the connection securely. Connect the oxygen regulator in the same manner, but remember that the threads will be normal, that is to say, right-hand. Next, the welding hoses are connected. Here you will notice that flashback arresters are already attached to the hoses. Attach the hoses securely to their corresponding regulators using correctly fitting spanners. The hoses are then connected to the selected torch, red to acetylene and blue to oxygen. In this section, we shall demonstrate the gas setting procedure used for welding processes. Start by making sure that both the torch control valves are closed. Next, ensure that the regulator pressure adjusting screws are fully turned out. This is done to prevent internal damage to the regulator and the gauges. Standing aside and away from the gauges, open each cylinder valve slowly. Open the valves one but no more than two full turns of the hand wheel. Observe the readings of the cylinder gauges to ensure that there is sufficient pressure. Refer to the manufacturer's data for cylinder pressures. Pressures should never exceed those specified by the manufacturer. Next, we must adjust the working pressure on each regulator in turn. The procedure is identical for both regulators. Let us demonstrate with the acetylene regulator. Keeping the torch nozzle directed away from your body or face, open the acetylene control valve. Slowly screw in the pressure screw on the regulator whilst observing the working pressure gauge. Continue to turn until the pressure gauge reads 60 kilopascals. This is the basic acetylene setting for most welding operations. Close off the acetylene torch valve and then repeat the procedure for the oxygen cylinder. Note that for virtually all welding operations, the working pressure of both oxygen and acetylene is set to an optimal 60 kilopascals. Complete the procedure by closing the oxygen torch valve. At this time, we need to check the system for gas leaks. A serious leak is easily noticed, either by smell, if around the acetylene connections, or by sound around the oxygen connections. Acetylene has a distinctive garlic-like smell. Oxygen, on the other hand, is totally odorless. This means that you may not easily detect a leak, especially if you are in a noisy workplace. To assist in the location of gas leaks, a special leak detection spray is obtainable. This liquid is totally safe to be used as it contains no oil or other substance that can ignite. 
the liquid is simply sprayed over all connections. If a leak exists, it will be noticed by the bubbles produced at that connection. Once noticed, then the connection can be attended to. A proper tightening of the connector nuts normally rectifies the problem. Remember to check for leaks at the torch using the same methods. When any leaks have been rectified, then the equipment is ready to be used. In this demonstration, we will describe the correct procedure for lighting a welding torch and setting a neutral flame. Make sure that you have your flint lighter close at hand when you're ready to light your torch. The procedure always starts by opening the acetylene control valve by about a quarter to a half turn. Holding the torch so that the nozzle is pointing away from your body and away from the gas bottles, strike a spark in front of the nozzle using your spark lighter. If you see that the flame is burning away from the tip, then the acetylene valve has been opened too much. Close the valve until the flame burns against the nozzle tip and you see black smoke at the other end of the flame. Adjust the valve carefully until the flame just stops producing black and sooty smoke. Next, slowly open the oxygen control valve. You will see an immediate change in the color and shape of the flame. If you look carefully into the flame, you will see a cone-shaped section right next to the nozzle aperture. The oxygen control valve must now be adjusted by small amounts to obtain the ideal shape of this cone, which should look like this, slightly rounded at its point. This is known as a neutral flame. If the shape is like this, that is, pointed and shortened, then there is an excess of oxygen present in the mixture. This type of flame is called an oxidizing flame. To correct this, close the oxygen control valve slightly until the desired cone shape forms. If there is a feather surrounding the cone, then there is an excess of acetylene in the mixture. This type of flame is called a carburizing flame. To correct this, Close the acetylene valve slightly until the feather just disappears and a neutral flame is attained. The neutral flame is the most desirable as it produces the correct temperature for the welding of steel. It must be noted that the pressure settings must not vary from 60 kilopascals on your working line gauges. Any shift in this pressure will affect the flame and make it almost impossible to adjust correctly. Once you have achieved a neutral flame, then you are ready to weld. Let us now discuss the correct procedure for shutting down the equipment. It must be made very clear to you that welding equipment must be shut down and made safe whenever you leave the job. To shut off your torch, you must always close first the acetylene control valve at the torch and then close the oxygen valve. Never close the oxygen valve first. By doing things the correct way there will be no risk of acetylene burning in the torch and the flame running back into the acetylene hose. With the torch extinguished shut off the cylinder valve on the acetylene cylinder. Next, open the acetylene control valve to drain off the gas within the hose and then turn the regulator adjusting screw fully out. Finally, close the torch control valve. Repeat the procedure for the oxygen supply. Close the cylinder valve Open the torch control valve, turn the regulator adjusting screw fully out, and then close the torch control valve. All gauges must register zero pressure at this time. 
wrap the hoses around their storage bracket on the trolley, and the equipment is now safe to leave. Do not wrap hoses around the cylinders. When you need to reuse the equipment after a shutdown, you must always purge the hoses before lighting up. This simple procedure ensures that only pure gas and no mixed gases, including air, are in the hoses, which could cause a flashback when you light up. Make sure that the pressure is adjusted correctly on the working line, and then open the torch valve. Allow gas to flow into the atmosphere for about five seconds, and then close the valve. Repeat the procedure on the other hose. It must be stressed that this procedure must be made in a well-ventilated area. Never purge an oxyacetylene set in a confined space. To summarize the shutting down procedure, always shut off your torch by first closing the acetylene valve and then closing the oxygen valve. Close off the main cylinder valves and then drain the gas out of each hose by opening the torch valves one at a time. Set the pressure adjusting screws to minimum and then close the torch control valves. Complete the shutdown by wrapping the hoses on the support brackets of the trolley. Before the torch is reused, always purge the hoses to make sure that any mixed gases are pushed out and that only pure gas is in the hose. This concludes program one. Practice the procedures that you have been shown in your own workplace. In program two, we will explain and demonstrate basic gas welding techniques.